Hello! Welcome to the February Vlog with news and updates about ASD. I'd like to talk about enrollment. Enrollment continues to be healthy with 149 students and several more in the pipeline. We're already ahead of last year's numbers, so that's good. Work on the Gallaudet Monument has begun and various pieces are being made and restored. We're very excited to see the statue come together over the next several months and we're hopeful that it'll be done in August or September. It's anticipated to be 18 to 20 feet high. The unveiling will be during ASD's homecoming on October 24th. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you alumni come together with us to celebrate the unveiling of this beautiful monument. The Advisory Board for Persons Who Are Deaf and Hard of Hearing has come together to meet. One of the topics discussed was allowing deaf people to receive their CDL licenses here in the state of Connecticut. Those discussions are now ongoing with the DMV and we're hopeful that progress will be made this year. The CDL licenses would pertain to in-state drivers only for here in Connecticut. Once state lines are crossed, drivers must comply with federal DOT guidelines. NAD is now working with the federal government to try to change and revise those guidelines so that hopefully any deaf person will be able to receive their CDL license. Source Interpreting has won the State of Connecticut Interpreting Services contract, which means we'll be providing interpreting services throughout the entire state. We're very excited about this opportunity. ASD has also been selected to provide statewide birth to three services, meaning we will serve all families throughout the state of Connecticut who have children with a hearing loss. I'd like to talk a little bit about the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. We know that the virus is starting to spread and our school has come together to discuss what measures we'll be taking. We've set up a plan for next steps and currently for student field trips, they will go on as planned. However, no international trips will be approved. Anybody going to conferences are still going as planned, but we are monitoring the state of Connecticut guidelines and CDC guidelines very closely before we decide any further steps. However, precautions have been taken at ASD to make sure that the health and safety of our students and staff on campus is priority. Now for an update on ASD athletics for our winter sport of basketball. This year, we had a great basketball season. Starting with girls varsity basketball, they had new head coach, Jacqueline Fetter Piasek, and assistant coach, Brittany Payne. They were a very young team with six middle school students participating. I was extremely impressed and I'm confident they have a great future ahead of them. This year, they finished with a 520 record and placed seventh at the ESDA tournament, but I am sure that they're going to reach the championship one day. For boys varsity basketball, they had coach Justin Brooks and assistant coach Clement Lovelace. This year, they did well, and it was a tough league this year. They finished with a 10-8 record, and going into the ESDA tournament was exciting. I went to watch, and they went into double overtime. They lost, unfortunately, to Lexington, and Lexington is my alma mater, but that's okay. They ended up placing third in the tournament. I'm so proud of all those boys. For the boys' JV basketball team, they have a new head coach, Jeffrey Deja and they finished with a 9-7 record. I was extremely impressed with those young boys, and I know they also have a great future ahead of them. We also had a boys' middle school team with new head coach, Vilmarie Lopez. They had a 7-8-2 record, very impressive. Also, we had youth basketball with head coach, Agapita Scheith. They had a 3-5 record. So we have youth, middle, and high school basketball teams. Wonderful, wonderful, and exciting to keep an eye on ASD athletics in the future. ASD Robotics. I have to say, I am so impressed with the students and how skilled they are at coding, building the robots, competing, the sportsmanship they display. 
It really is such a different experience from when we were in school to see all of these advances. And I'm confident that many of these students will go on to become successful engineers and designers. It's truly an impressive program. Yesterday, ASD ROV program, that's Remote Underwater Vehicle Program, a program where students design vehicles to go underwater for different obstacle courses, came together. This group of students had gone down to Puerto Rico earlier in the year to visit the deaf school there. And now the deaf school in Puerto Rico had sent students to ASD to work with our students to design an ROV. And you can see from the pictures here, it was a really nice event where all the students worked side by side, collaborating and developing strategies for these vehicles to compete in underwater obstacle courses. Here in this picture is Luis Perez, board member for ASD, and he himself is from Puerto Rico. He's been extremely supportive of the program, and it was so nice to see board members involved and participating to support our students yesterday. What an exciting day. Last week on Wednesday, I traveled down to Washington, D.C. for their annual CEASD Legislative Day. That's a day that focuses on advocacy for the Cogswell-Macy Act and also is an opportunity for all of us to work with our legislators to talk about ASD and the importance of our school so that we can continue to build those relationships. I was so impressed with our students. We had four students who went down to D.C. and they really took the initiative and the lead on having those discussions with the legislators. It was also very nice to see we had three members from the Connecticut Association for the Deaf join us on that trip. I'd like to thank the Washington, D.C. alumni chapter who hosted a wonderful breakfast for our students. They were extremely impressed with the students from ASD. ASD Academic Bowl. This year, we have a good group of students, and just last week, we had a mock academic bowl with staff versus students. In the end, staff won, but the students stayed strong. We're going to have another mock academic bowl practice on Thursday, March 12th at 7.15 p.m. here at the Rockwell Visual Communication Center. Come watch and support our students that night. The East Region competition will be held at St. Mary School for the Deaf on March 20th through the 23rd. If there are any alumni in that area, I would encourage you to go out there and support our ASD team. If they win that competition, they'll go on to Gallaudet University's national competition April 16th through the 20th. Extremely exciting. ASD will host the 11th annual Deaf Culinary Bowl. Various schools will be coming together to compete. This event will be happening on March 28th, and I hope you can come join us as our students compete. I have to be honest with you, the food is always delicious, and I'm so impressed with their skills. This will be hosted at Naugatuck Valley Community College. Connecticut Inclusive Arts some of our students from ASD have been participating in this program alongside students from other schools, and they will be performing together on Saturday, March 21st at 7.30 p.m. at the Kingswood Oxford Theater. I hope you'll come out and join us as we support our students in this wonderful performance. Here at the American School for the Deaf, our drama club will be presenting The Wizard of Oz on Wednesday, May 20th, here at the Rockwell Visual Communication Center at 7 p.m. Come join us and support our students in this performance. ASD is partnering with the Hartford Yard Goats. We'll be hosting Deaf Awareness Night on Wednesday, May 27th, 2020 at 7, 10 p.m. Be sure to go into our Facebook page and click on the link to purchase tickets. We'll have a dedicated section in left field behind third base for our community. I'll be throwing out the first pitch of the evening and our students will be performing Take Me Out to the Ball Game and God Bless America. This year, ASD is once again partnering with the National Theater for the Deaf to host a theater immersion program. June 15th 
through the 26th. This program is open to any student nationwide. We have advertisements out in the community, and this is open to any student who would like a future in the performing arts. It's a wonderful and very successful program. Once again this summer, we'll be hosting Isabella Summer Camp, and we'll have various sessions. We have a youth session that'll be June 28th to July 11th, and a teen session July 19th to August 1st. If you know of any student who enjoys summer camp, encourage them to come join us at Isabella. The camp program has really grown over the years. At Isabella, there's a week between the youth and teen session, and during that week, we're going to open it up to families who will be coming to ASD to work together during a Deaf Autism Retreat. The Deaf Autism Retreat for Families will be held here at ASD, and during that week, their children will be able to head out to Camp Isabella so the parents can work together and help improve lives of their children. I want to congratulate our alum, Barbara Casson. She has been selected to receive the honor of the Pauline Polly Peacock Service to Others Award for her hard work over the years here in the state of Connecticut around interpreting certification and rights for the community. She also was an important part of the settlement with the Connecticut Hospital Association to ensure they were providing qualified and certified interpreters for our community. She was also the chair for our 200th anniversary, and so Gallaudet University will be recognizing Barbara on April 4th at Gallaudet University at the Pakoff Alumni House. I'll be heading down there myself, and I hope you alum can come join us and support Barbara Casson, she truly is very deserving of this honor. Thank you all, and until next month, see you then.